Alright, welcome back to SOS, I'm Staff Sergeant Badass, and today we're going to talk about surviving the Cold War. But, I think I want to bring somebody into this. I think I'm going to bring in Sippy Cup. Ready? Go! Boing! <laughs> Alright. Hello! Hello everyone. And Sippy Cup. Alright, so, um, let me get this zoom. There we go. Get the zoom so it's not flickering. Alright, so... We're going to do this surviving the Cold War, and I know this video is going to be demonetized. I, I don't really care because it's one of these videos that we make. It's kind of like the medical videos. We know what's going to happen to them as soon as we post them. The thing is, is that I would rather make the video and have more people be educated in that. So, all right. Mm -hmm. <sighs> So going back to what we were talking about, what the Cold War means, we were having a side conversation and what the Cold War means is you're, basically it's a cold shoulder, cold shoulder and it's the beginning, it was, it marked the beginning of the arms race. Is that what you were saying? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Marked the beginning of the arms, arms race. The deadly arms race. Deadly arms race. Everybody had to have the biggest and baddest thing, the biggest and baddest weapon, mm -hmm. and uh, you were saying it was uh, uh, the atomic bomb. Hydrogen bomb. The hydrogen bomb. And the atomic bomb. But the atomic bomb is the one that blew a hole through the ocean. Yes, I believe so. It was it was something along those lines. They tested it on an island and phew, adds more poison to our atmosphere. It's cool. And I'm going to get more into that, you know, in the fish, wildlife kind of thing in just a minute. But the uh, we are in the middle of another Cold War now. Everyone's trying to win an arms race. And Russia has developed new ballistic missiles that can basically break apart, spread a cluster bomb that takes out the missile defense for our grid and then will sink down and to its destination. And China has already developed a, another type of weapon that does sort of the same thing, but it can travel anywhere in the world. Because of the fact that it actually gets to a certain height and then starts traveling at supersonic speeds. Well, I read also they have other a missile that will launch into smaller missiles. So you can't just hit one, it branches off. Yeah. And what happened, you know, years ago, the weapons they made then, you can only just kind of use your imagination into, into what we have now. And a lot of you probably have watched like future weapons and things like that. We're talking about stuff that they don't really talk about. And no one's going to tell you all this, but... It is an arms race, and it is a cold shoulder. And that cold shoulder, we're in a cold war. So we're in a cold war with China, Russia, and of course, everybody else knows North Korea. Oh, that being said, uh, <laughs> uh, the thing is, like, I, I kind of want to get out there. Like, I was just talking the other day about a government study that was done that. Uh, basically informed people how to survive a 10 kiloton. Now, 10 kil kilotons is nothing nowadays for ballistic missiles. I mean, they go way beyond 10 kilotons. And <clears throat> in your home, basically, the, this, the, the only way and your only chances, and I've talked about, you know, collecting duct tape, you know, uh, duct taping up your seals around your house, you know, any types of leaks, keep one vent going, you know, at least having one vent for oxygen into your house. If you get too crazy, if you got a leaky house like ours from the 1940s, then you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Just tape up what you can and use black plastic, use tar paper, all sorts of different techniques for doing that stuff. And there's tons of that stuff online for wrapping up your house. They even make these tents you can put in your living room and this is kind of a documentation video of stuff that I've talked about during a live cast that I want to get into a video like 
the, the tents that they manufacture, you can just look that stuff up yourself all day long. It pops up and there's these tents you can just pop up in your living room and it's just to wait out the fallout. The fallout drops 90% after the first 12 hours. So the, the other thing that people don't think about is the, the, okay, the initial blast, how it just, just total destruction of a city. You know, we got that part and then people will talk and everyone keeps talking about the warnings from Hawaii, but no one's giving out any information to help people. You know, it, they're not giving out information to anyone in Hawaii how to survive. They're just giving out these text messages to people. Oh, by the way, here's this, you're welcome. You know? Yeah, for like the Cold War, <laughs> they actually did their drills. They instructed people, you know, building shelters in your backyards. And yep. they actually practiced physically their drills. Digging, I mean, digging your own uh, fallout shelter, something like that, and going underground slightly, that protects you more than stacking books in your living room and building a fort. But if you've got no other options, you're going to be shoving furniture together into a big pile in your room, throwing blankets and rags over the top of this thing, and putting in some food and water to last you out for 12 hours, and sitting in this thing and waiting it out, you know, with your flashlight, telling ghost stories or whatever. Bunk but, beds would be awesome. For yeah, that. bunk beds. Get mm -hmm. get like on the bottom bunk. It'd have to be spacious enough for us because it's not just two people. We have kids we have to deal with too. You know, the kids will have to have room for them as well. And it's something to, to, to potty in, you know. I'm, I'm going to say potty. just cut a hole through the mattress. <laughs> the never, never mind the smell. All right, but it's stuff to put together in your mind and think about what you could do. If someone sent you a text message today saying missiles are inbound, you know, you have a ballistic missile headed inbound. What do you do? I'm not going to just grab my wife up and start hugging her. Oh, baby, we're leaving. You know, it's not going to be one of those type of episodes here at the BA home. We're going to start trying to fortify a spot to get into immediately that it's kind of like if you're, you know, you're getting hit with a tornado. I mean, what do most people do? They get in a bathtub, they get in the corner of a concrete building. Things like that are stuff for t tornadoes, you know, and stuff for, you know, uh, in, a, in a volcanic ash scenario, you're gonna want something over your mouth, you know, your inlet holes, so you don't suck in a bunch of uh, charred debris. All that stuff, you don't want ash going into your mouth. Same thing goes with a uh, nuclear warhead. You're still gonna have to put something over your, uh, over your pie hole so that you don't suck in a bunch of funky stuff. And relative, like, the, I guess the best way of saying this, people wanna ask, well, how long do I stay in my home? And stuff like that. A good question from, from a few people. I've gotten asked a lot of questions, and that's also part of this video. Wandering around outside is not gonna happen for, you know, you can go out, survey the area, and just get your butt back inside. There's, if there's no reason for you to be wandering around outside, don't do it. Stay indoors for at least six to eight weeks. If possible, I'm just saying, just because fallout drops 90% within the first 12 hours, doesn't mean jack. You're, all, these, uh, all these businesses and companies and all these places that you probably work for, you're probably gonna be in a shelter in place in scenario and you're gonna go fisticuffs to get out of that stuff. You know, a lot of people are gonna totally freak out and a lot of people are not going to be able to be held back. You know, big dudes like Bubba and all those guys, they're going to push their way through that stuff, get in their pickup truck and go home. They are not going to deal with that, I guarantee you, if, if that was the case. If that's your life, you know, that's your life. That's how you steal life. A lot of people will, a lot of people will say, well, don't worry about, you know, the, um, the burn effect, right? You got this burn radius in a ballistic weapon once it hits. That burn radius there, you got the different layers of radiuses of how much damage is occurring. And you've got your like, oh, these people will probably get second degree burns. These people will probably get third degree burns. Well, you don't wanna go wandering. You know, a lot of people are gonna be wandering around looking like Ryan Reynolds from Deadpool. You know, <laughs> they're gonna be all blistered up and funky. Second degree burns is freaking horrible. It is 
awful. And, you know, I, I've had second degree just a sunburn, and it was awful. Imagine someone just like, you ever taken a bug and, and held it up and just kind of flicked the lighter underneath it real quick to see its reaction? Just saying, for any weirdos out there. But, <laughs> I might be one of those weirdos. Okay, so, uh, spiders. Spiders, I'm just saying. Like, spiders are, are scary, you know. I a 45 to a spider all day long. You know, I'll burn my house down over a spider. I'm just kidding, I won't burn my house down over a spider. It was a spider. So, uh, that's the kind of effect it's going to have on the human body. You know, think of a spider getting flicked with a bick. I'm just saying. That's kind of the effect it's going to have on some people. And a second degree burn. Imagine second degree burns and trying to fend off attackers. You've got like a two by four, a ball bat, whatever's on you. Your EDC for that day is a ball bat. It happens to be a Louisville slugger. I don't know what your EDC setup is. You know, maybe it's not, you know, concealed carry. You know, you don't have a firearm. The thing is, second degree burns. Can you imagine trying to fend people off with second degree burns all over your body? And then not just that, it's going to singe all your hair off. This is not going to leave your hair. You know, you're... You won't have to worry about if the gas mask can fit you or not, but, you know, because you need to go shave. Because I don't think shaving might be an option for you. But second and third, you know, third degree burns can cause death. Second degree can if you start breaking out into fevers and crazy stuff and you start shaking all over the place. You, you know. got a lot of blisters and your blisters start popping. Mm-hmm. You get dehydrated and you're probably already dehydrated from running around defending yourself. Definitely, definitely, and you know, trying to get trying to get home to the family and things like that, and you got caught in the middle of it. You know, a lot of these, uh, you know, it's something else I've mentioned before. A lot of these fallout shelters that are marked fallout shelters back in the day during the Cold War, the uh, the bunkers were you know marked and all this stuff. And Congress, this was one of the funny ones that I actually read about in the story, was was uh, Congress actually had a fallout shelter but now it's turned into a data processing facility so it no longer exists and this was something that i mentioned in a podcast as well uh but a lot of the stuff that is outdated i mean your uh the alarm systems from the cold war of the past have uh they're they're outdated they're rusted they fire them up they catch fire and a lot of them can't can't work again and the ones that do work go off randomly. And uh, San Jose, I think it was San Jose, California, was the place that actually still has some in existence in the United States. And I think it's the only one left. The the sirens that you hear, uh, the sirens that you hear for like tornadoes and things like that are not the same sirens. They have the, a total opposite sound. But it's, that lacks training. That goes back into lacking training in this country you know, training people for that stuff. It has a distinct sound, so everyone knows what it is. So it just kind of goes with that. And um, uh, I'm just, oh yeah, back to food. All right, I wanted to talk about food real quick. Bunny suits, bunny suits are good. Keep bunny suits on hand. You know, nitro gloves, things like that. Stuff to cover your uh, face. Got those thick dishwashing gloves. Thick dishwashing gloves would work. As those long as they're ones. rubber. That would know. always, you know, never long enough. Yeah. As soon as you put your arm in, the water goes in. They've got to be washing. They've got to be made of rubber. Nitro won't hold up the same in certain situations. So you would want to have some thick rubber gloves. Those would work better for chemical purposes. Uh, keeping it on just to wander around outside and break the ground you know three feet of ground if you want to start planting so it planting again you're gonna to have to break the ground you know that all goes into good depth that is three feet man it's some people say it's all you know it's that like doesn't the, sound too it's bad. like the it's like have the you first digging six <clears throat> inches <laughs> it's the it's the you gotta think about alpha beta and gamma radiation man. gamma being the worst now uh, people start thinking like you know Oh, it's just four inches of topsoil or whatever. No, now you got to dig. It's not. It's not some little bit of layer of soil there. You got to break loose. Another thing, people will say, ah, food's going to be fine. You know, fish are going to be affected. The uh, it's 
it involves well you need to do something for yourself first to protect your thyroid you got to flood your thyroid so the isotopes and all that other jazzy stuff don't start affecting making you all discombobulated and jacked up to the point that you're dead so you got to flood that and you know like the nko uh the ok uh, i can't remember the n I always KO? Miss. basically it's the ko3s all right so Not the ko3s the ko3s all right Pills, you can find those on eBay or all over the place. It's just That was just a quick little, I'm just saying it. Uh, I didn't want to go too much into a bunch of products you can buy today because that's not what this channel's about. Um, the, uh, uh, that's, it's, the, it, it has a, like the gamma radiation has a strong effect on fish. Mm -hmm. And fish will, well, a lot of them are going to die. The ones that are still alive, you don't want. They, you don't want them, trust me. You just leave that stuff alone. And, you know, the, the talks about the ocean and stuff. We were just in this conversation a few days ago about the oceans and stuff. Fallout's going to travel, folks. It's going to travel all over the place. It's not some kind of like, it's, you know, fairy tale fantasy world where it just stays condensed in this one little area It that doesn't work like that. The wind picks up, things like that. Things get blown around. And that's just the way it is. Fallout will travel, right? So it'll spread over oceans and things like that. A good example, look at the Mississippi River. If a weapon was to strike anywhere near the Mississippi River, don't you think some of that fallout debris won't travel through the Mass Mississippi into the ocean? I mean, look at the Gulf of Mexico. Anyone ever been past there? I know I have. That place is funky. It's one of the most polluted uh ocean coastlines mm -hmm. in the world it's crazy all right hang on okay here comes the kid it's magic now we have a kid all right she come creeping in she likes to do that all right um uh, but yes not just with fish but also with eggs milk eggs will do the same thing eggs will have the same thing out um I would give it, I mean, I would give it time. I don't, I don't know how that works exactly, but that's a whole nother thing of research for a whole nother video that I can't even get into. I do know that eggs will be affected as well. I don't know how much of, if you could save chickens from all this chaos, you would have to bring them indoors somehow. I, I don't know how that, any of that would even work. I'm just throwing it out there. A lot of cattle yeah, is just going to drop dead. If you bring your chickens in, you're going to get uh, their poop and yep. you inhale it in the respiratory system and you can get really yep. sick. Yep. That's it's just, die from it. it's good food for thought. It's it just is. good food for thought. I'm just throwing it out there because people don't think you of gotta stuff. You got to organize. Mm -hmm. it's if you, if you got chickens, you got to plan it out very carefully on making sure that you don't inhale that dried chicken poop. And then look at milk, like milk, even if you have a cow that survives, mm -hmm. the milk's not going to be good. You're not going to be able to drink that. I'm just saying. But those, I mean, this kind of just goes into more and more things to think about. Okay. You know, yeah. um, start looking at, at, um, uh, you know, stuff that you would need for airtight sealing your house, you know, good stuff to have in like a. Uh, container like a rubbermaid container or something just some duct tape and some tarps and stuff like that things like that would be good to have i'm just saying to seal everything up we'll get more into that stuff when i get into the bug and end series mm -hmm. i'll start showing you some more items like that i would i wasn't going to make this an items video i was going to make this more of a things you think about kind of video and now i've got a kid sitting there playing with my tools on my bench but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> all right you got anything you want to add to this before yeah. I close it up? Yeah. No, just, you, you got it. That, you think I covered it pretty good? Mm -hmm. I yeah. just like having you for a backup. Yeah. It's always good to have you have my back. All right. You're watching SOS. I'm Staff Sergeant B.A. Yeah. Sippy Cup. Sippy Cup. Have a beautiful, fabulous, fantastic day. It's cold out there. And it's cold out there. So stay warm. And stay warm. Layer. Layer your clothes. Yeah. Good job, Drew. Good job. Giving people tips. All right. You guys have a great day. God bless.